So I've always been wondering, why aren't OnePlus phones as popular as the iPhones and the Samsungs where I am from? There shouldn't be a reason for that. So today we're going to take a look at their 2019 flagship, which is the OnePlus 7 Pro. You're going to see what makes the OnePlus 7 Pro tick. So OnePlus has always been branded as a flagship killer, which basically means that they're going to give you the specs of the big boys, which are the Samsung Galaxies and the iPhones, at the smallest price. So for instance, they'll be selling for about $1,000, and OnePlus will give you probably the same specs for about $700. So they used to call themselves the flagship killers. But are they really flagship killers now? I don't think so. But they still produce one of the best values for your money in terms of buying a phone. So let's take a look at OnePlus 2019 flagship phone. That is the OnePlus 7 Pro. Now, this phone checked a lot of boxes. In fact, OnePlus phones have always been the standard for me. If a phone is better than the OnePlus phone of that year, the phone is an awesome phone. If it's less, the phone is an okay phone. But this strikes the balance between value and money. The first thing I want to talk about this phone is the display. This display is gorgeous. It's a bezel-less, notch-less, immersive, colorful, bright. It just, it's just striking. In fact, I gave it the best display for 2019. It has the best display, period. I don't know why a lot of reviewers aren't able to say it's better than the Samsung, but in my opinion, I think it's better. And that's because of one reason, which I'll get to. Because it has no notch, no bezel, it gives you an immersive experience when you're watching it. Couple that with 90 hertz. I explained what hertz and refresh rates mean in my previous video, so you should go and look at it. But then couple that with 90 hertz, and then you will get a very fluid, as they call it, fluid AMOLED display. What 90 hertz does or high refresh rates does is that when you are scrolling through, it gives you this battery feel. Like imagine you have oil on the floor and then you are passing your arm on it. Like you know that feeling. Yeah, like it just smooth. Just take a look at it. It's smooth when you are scrolling through because of the extra frames you have for each second. So it's hard to describe how the display or the refresh rate of the display feels in the hand, but you have to get a hold of it. You will definitely see the difference. Another thing I like about this display is the brightness. Now, one thing I hate is being in the sun and trying to square to see what's exactly on my phone. It's really, really annoying. And this phone nailed in terms of the brightness. So when you're outside, you can clearly see what you're doing. And no, you don't have to look like some guy B who is trying to, you know what I'm talking about. Now let's talk about performance. OnePlus major, major, major feature every year is their performance and they always nail it now this year they gave the biggest baddest chip of 2019 which was the snapdragon 855 and this coupled with a 90 hertz screen makes the phone very very smooth it doesn't lag since since my use of it it has not lagged it has not slowed down it has not frozen it's just smooth all the way in fact oneplus always nails their performance so it's no shock that this year is no exception so battery life, battery life is good. I think it's very good actually. So I'm getting about five to five and a half hours of screen on time, which will reflect to a full days of use. And I'm a very heavy user, right? I use my phone as maximum brightness, everything. So me getting five and five hours of screen on time every day, is actually a very, very good. And for most people, they'll go through a whole day and maybe the next day without needing to charge, but then the battery alone is not what even strikes me the most it's the charging now trust me when i say you have never seen a phone that charges as fast as the oneplus 7 pro they put in a 30 watt charger in the box and it's called warp charging now this gets your battery from 0 to 50 percent in 20 minutes i don't know whether i able to grasp that but then when you get the phone in your hand and you are charged I, now i don't need to charge my phone overnight because i know when i get up by the time i'm done dressing and everything my phone is charged that's how fast it charges so for the charging speed and the battery together i think it's an a plus experience you don't need to worry about battery at all because you know you can always top up and then just in 10 minutes you're done you're done for the day you can just go on with your daily activities now let's talk about the camera i know a lot of you have been waiting for this 
Now, the camera of the OnePlus 7 Pro is the worst feature of the phone, which is a very, very wonderful thing. Now, someone may ask, why is the worst feature of a phone the most wonderful thing? Now, if you really realize, or if you get to use the phone, you realize that every single thing about the phone is an A+, the screen, the battery, the, the performance, everything about the phone is A+. So, the camera is not able to live up to the expectation of the other specs. This is what I'm saying. You take a look at these pictures, for instance. All these pictures were shot on the OnePlus 7 Pro, untouched and unedited. Now, tell me if these are bad in the comments. So, somebody might ask, why these pictures don't look bad? So, why am I saying it's bad? So, this camera falls short of just the iPhone 11 Pro and the Pixels and probably the Samsung Galaxy. And these phones are the best of the best in terms of camera quality. And this phone is just right under them. So I think that OnePlus just needs to take the extra step, which they have in their OnePlus 8 Pro. So this phone actually doesn't have a bad camera at all. When you learn editing, it becomes all the more beautiful. Take a look at these pictures that I shot again and I edited this time. It just looks, I don't know what to say again. It's, look, the camera is, a solid A, not an A plus, or let me say B plus or A minus. I won't give it an A plus. A plus would be the pixels and the iPhones, but then this camera is solid and it should not prevent you from buying the OnePlus 7 Pro. There are a couple of things I really like about the OnePlus 7 Pro that probably might not be on the spec sheet. Number one is the Zen mode. Now, Zen mode is a mode that deactivates you from your phone. Basically, when you activate Zen mode or you put Zen mode on, you're not able to access your phone for a particular amount of time. So you can set it to 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 40 minutes. And the only thing you can access is camera. You can't go to your gallery, you can't, you can't receive phone calls. You can't access your phone actually till the time is over. And that has helped me a lot as a student. If I want to study, I just put on Zen mode for 40 minutes. And then I'm able to, because I know there's no distraction. When somebody sends me a message, it won't come. Somebody calls, I think it'll give me a notification, but it won't come. Like, it's been very helpful. That's one of the features I really like about the OnePlus 7 Pro. The second is the haptics motor. Now, a lot of people don't pay attention to the vibration of the motor when you're using your phone. But trust me, this, if you have been using an iPhone, you kind of know how it feels when you're scrolling through some menus that are bit by bit and has this haptic feedback that behind this, right? The same thing for the OnePlus. It might not be on par with the 11 Pro's haptics, but then it's a very solid. In fact, this is the most solid haptic feedback I've seen on an Android phone yet. It's very solid and it adds to the feeling and experience of the OnePlus 7 Pro. The third thing is the alert slider. Now, it always baffles me why the other Android manufacturers don't have an alert slider on their phone. It's just simple. The iPhone users know this already. When you have an alert slider, you can switch from silent to general to outdoor profile easily. And you don't have to open the phone, go to the setting or click the volume button just to change the setting. That's really annoying. And I really think all the Android manufacturers should switch to this. Like they should have an alert slider that should just change your phone to silent and to mute something. Just put an alert slider. Like it's very important. I don't know why the other manufacturers haven't done it. Another feature I like about the phone is locking apps in RAM. Now this phone comes with an 8 gig RAM. Think about it. Android doesn't really utilize 4 8 gig of RAM. I'm sure it utilizes like 6 gig. So having that extra 2 gig of RAM, I was wondering what I use it for. So I saw that you're able to lock apps in RAM. But this basically means that for instance, if you're downloading something or if you regularly use a particular app, right, and you lock it in RAM, anytime you open the app, it will automatically continue from where it left off because it's logged in RAM, it's logged in the memory of the phone. I think it's a very, very good feature and I've been really using it a lot since I found it out. So yes, that's one feature I really like about the phone. And the last thing is the inbuilt screen recorder. Again, I don't know why Google hasn't implemented it in Android inbuilt. It's quite simple. Just put it in the setting, put it in the notification tree. Like, it's that simple. If I want to record, I don't have to go to Play Store and go and download the third party app just to record my screen. And OnePlus has this inbuilt and it has a lot of customization. You can record on 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. In fact, you have a lot of customization. You can shoot, you can, you can record in 1440p 
or 1080p and it really helps to have all these customizations to make the experience of recording your phone screen very very enjoyable so now oneplus has made a full-on flagship for 2020 the oneplus 8 pro and they've kind of perfected all the other minor flaws they didn't have like the lack of wireless charging now personally i don't own any reverse wireless charger and 90 percent of the people i've met don't have reverse wireless charger so i don't need it i don't really need it so not having wireless charger is not a deal breaker it also doesn't have ip68 but i've seen people testing it oneplus has assured us that they have putting measures in place to to make it water resistant and i believe them because i've seen people testing it and it works even though it's a disclaimer don't go and drop your phone in water i made a whole video about waterproofing in phones you can also watch that but then it will be able to sustain splashes and rain and other stuff just don't go and drop it in water not to test because it's not ip certified even if it is you shouldn't do that so if you want a solid phone but you don't have a solid budget this phone is a solid buy so the OnePlus 7 Pro is a solid recommend. You can go and buy it and you enjoy the experience. Trust me, I've really enjoyed my experience with it for the past six months. So this has been a critical summary of the OnePlus 7 Pro. If you like this video, make sure you click the like button, share and subscribe if you haven't. And make sure you click the bell icon if you want to see future videos from us. Until next time, it's Michelle Manuel and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.